you've got the not even a disgruntled employee, just an unengaged employee who's tried to contribute, tried to look at the bigger picture, and it was ignored or or you know something happened where they felt like they weren't heard. And so they just went back down to the task level and said, look, I'm just going to do my tasks. OK, I'm just going to get through here. It's not quite that dire. Right. It's it's not that there's this person who's detached, but it's this person who says, what else would I do? Of course, I'm going to do my tasks. And so there, there's this opportunity to say, well, there's a there's a bigger picture here. There's there's actually more to the story than just the tasks. There's an, there's a why that we're trying to accomplish. And I, you, you knew we'd eventually get there uh, talking about the why. Welcome again to It Doesn't Take a Genius, conversation with introspective perspectives and pithy points of view. Here are your hosts, my friends, Max and Marty. I think that's Mark and Mike. Yeah, whatever. Ramsey! You know, we had to redo the start of this episode and you had just as much enthusiasm as you did first time around. That's Winston important. Churchill once said that the key to success is going from one disappointment to the next with no <laughs> loss of enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah, I, I I look like Winston Churchill. Uh, hopefully Ooh. I'm thinking like him. Uh, wow. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, on that note, I thought it was maybe like dude perfect having an influence on you. The YouTubers that you said had so much enthusiasm, no matter what little trick they were doing. So, uh, but yeah, Winston Churchill probably you know, just as valid. Makes oh, a lot yeah. of sense. Yeah, yeah. Dude perfect Winston Churchill. When you look at the breadth of our <laughs> of our knowledge, it is truly stunning. It is. Yeah, it's it's amazing. I don't so, disagree. So I understand uh, we got a letter. We got mail. Yes. Uh, we yes. got mail. And yeah uh, and somebody posing a, a, a quandary to us. Indeed, a quandary has been posed. And in fact, um, we've got a backlog of these that we're trying to get through. So we th this one's going to be maybe a two-parter episode with a, another uh, uh, letter that came in. So uh, it, yeah, It's so amazing I'm, how much mail that two listeners can generate. <laughs> isn't that the truth yeah, that's impressive right there i just want to i just want to acknowledge that before we went on. i agree totally agree well both of them wrote a letter right i mean that's how yeah. it works oh, yeah, anyway. it works. so um so this is a gentleman uh who works for an it uh auditing team he, he runs it auditing teams for a it's a it's a fortune 100 company that that we'd all know and he has uh, talked to me before about how uh, this is a, just a really good team. They've, they've even had some new hires that have been excellent hires. And uh, the, the, the team has, has really um, uh, just, just done well. And uh, they've, they've run into an opportunity. And here's the opportunity. So these are, these are teams that are, that are involved in auditing uh, on IT subjects. I'm, I'm going to be pretty vague here just for the uh, sake of anonymity. Uh, but they uh, go to sites and do audits that involve IT uh, for this organization. And they've tended to have two different types of people. They've got the, the people who are experts at IT and have some specialty. And there will be this checklist of things that need to be looked at as a part of the audit. And they will really focus in on those two or three or four things that they're specialists in. So we've got the specialists. That's one hire that they've made. And the specialists, if, if they're going to make an error, it's in that they focus on just the specialties. They've got another group that they've hired who are really good at the auditing process. And so these are the, you might call them the auditors. And the, the while the specialists focus on one or two things, the auditors are going to make sure they make it through that entire checklist. <laughs> In both cases... You're seeing where we're going with this. In both cases, there's a real opportunity to slow down and say, let me look at this site that I'm at today. What are the opportunities here? What are the things that these folks need that other places maybe don't? What are parts of the checklist that really apply here that I need to make sure I do some follow-up questions on, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So they want to get better about asking questions. And um, so, so that's that's sort of. I, I guess I could stop there, but I, I will share a little bit more, which is that uh, this individual um, has, at my recommendation, has read the Coaching Habit, which is one of our coaching books, mm -hmm. and um, and he said, you know, that's sort of like you know management to employee coaching for the most part, 
what's what's a book we could read that would help us get better at asking questions when we're at that auditing level and going in doing these IT audits. So um, you and I had a preliminary discussion about this, and I you you went a direction that I thought we might go, and so maybe I'll just throw it over to you, and you can give your initial thoughts here about this. Uh, particular individual's uh, opportunities. Well, the first thing I'm picturing is just this army of Dilberts, <laughs> just <laughs> just going out, right? And they've got their checklist. They got a clipboard, and a checklist, and they're insanely focused on the checklist. Yeah, right, right. You right. know, so they're checking it off. I have no idea that the the building was hit by a tornado while they were working <laughs> through their checklist. That there was a fire in the corner. So focused. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I got yeah, number seven is good, eight is good, nine is good. <laughs> yeah, and no sense of the, the the bigger picture of the world around them. And, and, we, and we run into this all the time, right? You, you asked me to do this job. I read my job description. Yeah. <laughs> it said, do these things. These are my roles and responsibilities. And anything beyond that, it's not my problem. Right. And, and we know that with our, especially with our, our workforces being smaller in size now, uh, people being asked to wear multiple hats. And, and even if you're not, there still has to be this sense of what's the purpose? What's the overall purpose? What are we trying to achieve right. uh, as an organization? And, and without that bigger picture, uh, the only thing that you can focus on is your checklist. Yeah. And if nobody's talking to me about, you know, the role I play in the, in this and how it contributes to a greater cause, purpose, uh, mission, vision, whatever it might be, you won't get any more out of me. My, my, my good ideas, the, the, my ability to look around, it's not going to be there. Why would I use that when I'm not even sure what I'm looking for? Yeah, yeah. And, and we have organizations we've worked with in the past, both of us, I'm sure, where you've got the not even a disgruntled employee, just an unengaged employee who's tried to contribute, tried to look at the bigger picture, and it was ignored, or or you know something happened where they felt like they weren't heard, and so they just went back down to the task level and said, "Look, I'm just going to do my tasks. Okay, I'm just going to get through." Here, <laughs> it's not quite that dire, right? It's it's not that there's this person who's detached, but it's this person who says what else would I do? Of course, I'm going to do my tasks. And so there, there's this opportunity to say, well, there's a, there's a bigger picture here. There's, there's actually more to the story than just the tasks. There's an, there's a why that we're trying to accomplish. And I, you, you knew we'd eventually get there uh, talking about the why. Uh, so, so I don't, we've, we've done episodes about Simon Sinek and his concept. Do you want to briefly give the uh, uh, sort of the the elevator pitch of of what it means to start with why. Well, uh, yeah, he uh, Simon talks about the you know he calls it the golden circle and and when he talks about it he talks about great companies know their why mm -hmm. and, and you know he, he of course like everybody he references Apple yeah. uh, you know and he talks about Apple wants to you know they want to innovate they want to make things that are beautiful and easy to use. And then uh, once you establish that, then the next uh, the next thing is is what we do, uh, yeah. right? And so here's what we do: we build these cool devices and things like that. And here's how we do it, uh, right? We get the best and brightest minds and things like that. Yeah. And a lot of people start the opposite: doing here's you know here's how I do it, and, and then here's what I do, uh, but I don't know why. And mm -hmm. so it's easy for me to get distracted, to get off course, to become unfocused, or uh, we tend to focus on the activities. Here's what I'm doing, right? And because we have no bigger picture, uh, right? I have no idea that there should, there may be something else I should be doing. Yeah, but, but yeah, I do this. What I explain to people. Here's what I do. I'm the, you know, I'm the IT checklist guy. Yep. <laughs> you yep. know, and so I identify as that. And not having a bigger picture doesn't allow me to see uh, the why, which will inform the what, the how, and, and, and modify that based upon the situation. So, so the, the, the way you're describing that, the golden circle has why at the center. We, we mm -hmm. figure out why we're doing what we're doing. What's our purpose? What's the meaning? And then how we do what we do spills out to the next layer of that circle. There mm -hmm. are some, some values that are tied into that why, you know. And then further out than that is what we do. And it could it could be literally anything. 
Um, I, 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 you and I were talking about the example of Disney earlier and how, uh, what, what's, Di is it put a, put a smile on ever? Well, one of the, yeah, early in uh, Disney's career, Walt said, you know, they want to, they, he wanted people to put a smile on people's faces. And that was, that was their, their vision. Uh, right. And so that informed him, it wasn't to provide, it wasn't to build the best theme parks. Yeah. It wasn't to create the best, the best animated feature films. It was, we want to put a smile on people's faces. And so they found a way to do that with animated films. They found a way to do that with theme parks. They found a way to do that with a streaming service, right? They found a way to do that with merchandise, uh, restaurants, uh, experiences. Um, so, so had they just said, you know, here's what I do, uh, right? I build theme parks. I run yeah. theme parks. Yeah. Uh, then, yeah, they would, they would probably have been good at it, but incredibly limited as to the scope. And it's hard to get people excited about that, right? right? I can right. I can emotionally buy into making people happy. It's hard to emotionally buy into let's run the most profitable theme park. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see if we can run the roller coaster, you know, the same number of times every day and cycle it. You know, it's like yeah. that, that doesn't get me up and going in the morning. But if you can if you can run the, the roller coaster in such a way and make the experience in such a way that you put a smile on people's faces before they get on and you know, the roller coaster is going to do its part and then make them smile when they get off the roller coaster. Yeah. Now you've got a whole different level of engagement. You're hundred percent right. And you know, what's fascinating about that to me is that so many of those jobs, so many of those places that you mentioned, you know, there are other streaming services, there are other amusement parks there are hotels restaurants that are all part of the disney empire that you could go do elsewhere uh, what they do is not all that special other people do them but how they do that is going to look radically different so the specific example of you know we're here to put a smile on everybody's faces and i'm a janitor you know you could be a janitor with the same mop bucket etc at a hotel down the street but at Disney, what that's going to look like is I'm going to do that in such a way that I'm going to put some smiles on people's faces. And Disney does some very specific things in their training, their orientation, how they set up the, uh, the you know, the physical space that uh, even has janitors bought into that concept. So so I guess what I'm hearing is why, how, what, you know, the the vision, the purpose, the values that spill out from that, and then what you do is going to be changed as a result of the why and the how. Is oh yeah. Oh, oh, definitely. You're right. One of my, one of my favorite Disney stories is, you know, you know, Walt was big on, you know, not letting people see how the magic happened. Right. And so, you know, the Disney grounds, you know, wonderful, you know, you know, plants and topiaries and things like that. And uh, so the landscapers would work in the evening hours after the park closed. Hmm. And so when they, but when they surveyed the employees, what they found out, one of the most frequent questions that the employees got asked is, what plant is that? You know, how did you shape it like that? How do you keep it, you know, how do you keep it looking like that? And so their first thought was, well, let's train all the employees on, you know, make them horticultural experts uh, mm -hmm. so that they could, you know, share this knowledge, bring a smile to the, to the guest space. And then they thought, well, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's not probably the most effective use of their time. And so what they didn't start doing was letting the landscapers work during when the parks open. Hmm. And they gave the landscapers training in, how to, you know, that it's okay. Yeah. And we, it's preferred that, yeah, if somebody asks you a question, stop, explain what you do, how you do it and, and, and bring a smile to their face. And That's yeah, great. yeah. It's like, okay, if I know my why, then I know that, that that's, you know, that's an element of this, then that's the, that change becomes very easy to, to, to envision and justify and implement. Yeah, I was going to say that. I'm not saying that this is how it happened, but I can see the conversation where they say, you know, we thought that bringing a smile to people's faces would be to, you know, do do a bunch of stuff behind the curtain and then voila, the park looks great. But it turns out that there might be a bigger <laughs> smile on people's faces if the doggone crew is there to turn around and have that pleasant demeanor and, and uh, you know, answer questions. So, you know, there's internally some it's a values clarification conversation, right? It's like, which of these is going to really honor our values the most? Mm -hmm. um, I, I had an organization I worked with, uh, this has been years ago, uh, but we did a retreat 
and uh, it was it was really the business owner who was the client, and and we did a retreat uh, defining his values. And it was like the next week after he came back from our retreat, uh, he had an employee blow up, and um, and he he said, I in the past I would have reacted to that because there were some clear violations of you know uh, policy behavior and so on, and that person probably should have been fired on the spot in the grand scheme of things before. But since he had defined all these values, he went away and really thought about it and um, basically had a, a very difficult, uh, crucial conversation with this person where he spelled out, um, look, um, I exist to serve others. That is the point of, of this company and, and my personal mission. And so I feel like there's something I'm missing here about how we could be serving you. Can you walk me through this? And, um, you know, not only was the employee saved, I'm, I'm painting with very broad brush strokes. So, you know, know that there was much more to the story. and It was very difficult. But uh, the, the employee was not only saved, but re-engaged. And there were some things that came to light that would have never come to light had it not been for him slowing down and saying, wait a minute, I'm going to honor my values in this moment. Instead of just wholesale, you know, like, OK, well, this is obviously, you know, the end and we're terminating you. Um, there, there are, there are countless examples of how, when you'll be thoughtful about the value, that's what leads to a change in what you do. So, um, are you ready for this? I looked up this fortune 100 companies values, and I'm not going to tell you all of them. And I'm not going to use the words they use. Cause I want to keep this very anonymous for, for some, for a variety of reasons, but, um, one of their uh, values, it turns out, is to try to um, constantly revisit any routines. Hmm. So we have a team that has a routine of a checklist for very good reasons. It's a process they have to follow. A lot of compliance issues, I would imagine. And yet they're being uh, uh, told within the organization that routines are something we need to constantly revisit and, and you know, go through and, and try to reconsider. Mm -hmm. um, another one is uh, trying to uh, use togetherness as part of uh, the, the, the goal. So making sure that all different teams and, and I would suggest probably third party sites and vendors and so on really working together in partnership is is a real key here. If I just threw those two little bits at you, you know, uh, sort of this idea that you're 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 supposed to revisit any routines and processes that you follow and that you're supposed to do this together and in partnership, uh, does that present to you any opportunities for this IT auditing team? Oh yeah. Well, the first, my first thought is I'm, I'm picturing their checklists and because it's a Fortune 100 companies, right? There's always a date, you know, revi last revised date at the bottom of any piece of paper. Oh, uh, yeah. So great. I've got this that's checklist, great. right? And it says last revised, uh, you know, December 12th, uh, 1999. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you know, like, okay. Or, you know, are we living at, when was the last time this thing was changed? It, does it, does it still serve our people? Now, does yeah. it serve us, right? Does it serve, uh, you know, our, our audience, our customers, be the internal customers or external customers? So, yeah. so yeah, that would be the first question, just as the attention getter. <laughs> yep. Like, when was the last time this list was was modified? Yep. Are there things on here that are still not are are no longer uh, uh, applicable? Are there things missing from the list that that you that you're looking for but aren't yep. on the list to make a notation about? Yep. Right. And then once you got the juices going for, for that conversation, then you would go and talk about, okay, so why are we having this conversation? Mm -hmm. And then you go to the value. All right, this is this value that, that, that we espouse and that, that we, we haven't been living up to uh, to its fullest. And, and, and can the application of you know, this, this value serve us at this point? Now I, I, the conversation. I think that's great. I think that's a great idea. Um, and and I can see that as a group conversation. I can see that as a one-on-one -on -one too, to just say, mm -hmm. you know, what do you notice? Um, and, and you notice what we're doing here. This is probably a good thing for us to wrap up on. We're really concluding this conversation talking about um, this particular person's uh, point early on. I read The Coaching Habit, 
but that's more manager to employee. I need to get my people asking good questions. Mike, we seem to be suggesting that we ask them questions so that we can get them to ask some questions and to use a, a coach approach to solving this problem. And the solution to the problem might be the coach approach with their uh, various sites that they're auditing. Mike, are we in danger here because we're coaches of seeing every problem as something that could be solved by coaching? You know, that, that whole thing about, uh, you know, if, if all you have is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. Um, I, are, are we in danger here of, of overusing coaching? Uh, and I don't think so. Based upon our experience in the workplace, it, it's dramatically underutilized. Yeah. Uh, and it's a, a lot of times it's it's ready, fire, aim. Yep. And, and people make decisions, they jump to conclusions, they make judgments, they take action without having fully discussed uh, the issue, sometimes with the people who are closest to it and would know best maybe how to modify it and make it yep. better. Um, and so whether you call it a, a coaching session or a discussion or a fact finding or an interview, I, uh, we don't care what you call it. Uh, right? <laughs> but the, the goal is to, to, yeah, before we take action, let's ask some good questions, figure out what, what folks know yeah. and, and what, they, what they've discovered. And then even asking questions of, you know, what do you think our next step should be? Uh, and and if you want to call that coaching, uh, interviewing, whatever you want to call it, uh, but it's the discussion that has to be had. Yeah. And so yes, we have found that that you know every 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 place every business we've ever been in, we ask them, all right, so what's your biggest challenge here? And they all say the same thing: communication. Yep. <laughs> right. This is this is how we we pay for our houses, you know, put <laughs> kids through college. Yeah. It's because it's nobody is communicating. Yep. And, and so, you know, teaching people how to, you know, ask great questions, to be curious, uh, to listen, uh, which are all, you know, cornerstones of coaching yeah. uh, that can be applied to to almost any situation that they're in. Uh so so yeah, it is um a skill and, and yeah if you if you if you think that the word coaching is being overused find another word for it but still have a great discussion 100 percent. and and you know coaching think you know i've said this before but think coach bus or stage coach it's the vehicle to get you from here to there so if you're trying to get from here to there it's going to have to involve some conversation and some communication to uncover what's you know what what's going on so that we can take action that's what coaching is really and so in, in that sense, I think it's so broad that it, it applies in all these instances that we've talked about, but you're hundred percent right. Um, we will have some follow-up episodes about this topic. Uh, we're going to do one on the idea of if your value is innovation, how, how might that bump up against culture, the culture that you're trying to have? Mm -hmm. uh, do, do you have to pick between the two? And another one's just going to be on the idea that if you're going to be a leader, you're going to have to be a conversationalist. So we're going to we're going to talk about those in future episodes. But hopefully this helps our intrepid listener. And, um, you know, maybe they want to hire us. I don't know. Yeah. Just or throw that I out guess, there. Uh, yeah. Subscribe. Hit like. Touch the oh, bell yeah. thingy. All, all the promotional YouTube. stuff we never do. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. yeah. We're we're terrible at this. <laughs> we really are. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you would be a terrible salesperson. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And I'd be right there with you starving to death. Uh, yeah. Cause, uh, yeah. Can't even promote our own channel. Um, but uh, luckily we've got a rock uh, foundation upon which the whole thing is built. Uh, yeah. The unwavering, uh, you know, always sarcastic. Uh, let's uh, turn it over to our announcer, uh, Mr. Wolf. That's what it's really about. <laughs> So go ahead and tweet that, or share it any other way you want. As always, there are no rights reserved, no trademarks, no copyrights. Share it if you want to. And join us next time on It Doesn't Take a Genius. That's good enough.